Hello everyone, welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to look into George Kelly's personal construct theory. George Kelly was an American psychologist who questioned the thought processes of psychologists of his time and thought that many of them even looked down upon their patients. This is because psychologists thought of themselves as scientists who could systematically study human behavior and thought and could possibly make predictions based on patterns. And at the same time, they looked at their patients as victims of sexual energies or past conditions. Kelly, on the other hand, proposed that every human being is a scientist and every human being has constructions of their reality like scientists having their theories. He stated that we all have our own theories and hypotheses about situations in life. As we live our life, we test our hypotheses time and again and weigh the results of our experiments to refine our hypotheses. And again, every human being has expectations, like scientists have theories. We keep testing these expectations, like scientists running tests to prove or disprove their theories. So again, we are alike. Each of us approaches the world like scientists approach their theories. And this is the metaphor which actually gave birth to the personal construct theory. In the simplest of ways, Kelly's personal construct theory is essentially a human personality theory which focuses on the distinctive ways in which individuals construct and reconstruct the meanings of their lives. In this tutorial, we'll understand what constructs are, what their characteristics are, how they're used in therapy, and then open up an interesting discussion point at the end. So stay tuned to the end. So now, to begin with, what actually are constructs? According to Kelly, we don't simply react to occurrences and situations in our day-to-day -day life. We create patterns in our mind to help us make sense of the world around us. These patterns help us understand our environment, our role in the bigger scheme of things, and also help us decode our own lives. These patterns are called constructs. Another way of stating this would be that as we live our lives, we gather information, we evaluate this information, we assimilate it with what we already know, and then we develop interpretations. These interpretations that we develop are our personal constructs. Our constructs are shaped out of the information we gather in our lives and are also used by us to predict the outcome of our lives. Since our constructs define our perspectives, how we lead our lives is obviously also influenced by our constructs. For example, some of you might think of bungee jumping as an exhilarating experience, one that you have tried, one that you probably like to try again, but there will be some others who will think of it as a really unsafe experience and a complete waste of time and money. Kelly believed that our present interpretations are always open to revisions and replacements based on any new knowledge that we gather. This concept of our constructs being replaced by an alternative is called constructive alternativism. But not all alternatives are considered and selected by us. When an alternative interpretation is presented, we weigh it against our existing perspective, test it against our existing perspective and experience, and then choose to amend or replace our existing interpretation. Again, we behave like scientists. For example, we discussed a couple of perspectives on bungee jumping. Now, in my own situation, I tried bungee jumping once a few years ago. The build up to the jump and after the jump, I thought I would do it again because I really enjoyed the experience and maybe I'd do it several times. But after I tried some other activities like skydiving and paragliding, I felt that 
bungee jumping is a waste of time because it doesn't last as long as many other experiences. So my perspective was altered because of different experiences or perspectives. Now let's look at the components of the personal construct theory. The personal construct theory begins with a fundamental postulate or basic principle to put it simply and 11 corollaries or propositions to put it simply. Now let's look at these now. Kelly's fundamental postulate or basic principle states that a person's processes are psychologically channelized by the ways in which he anticipates events. This simply means that we build constructs based on how we perceive any event and predict the future with it. This construct is then used by us in the future to verify if that prediction we made was true or not. So we keep predicting what is going to happen and then once something happens we try and compare it with what we had predicted in the first place. This reinforces his idea of all human beings being scientists, developing and testing theories while living their lives. We keep learning from our past experiences, keep looking into the future, and based on what we anticipate will happen in the future, we behave a certain way to get the result we desire. The 11 corollaries he proposed expanded upon the fundamental postulate and elaborated the characteristics of constructs. So that is how we understand what constructs are. So the, the corollaries are as follows. The first type is construction corollary. So no event or experience is repeated in its entirety. I'm sure we can all agree on that. There are however similar events and experiences and a person predicts or constructs their behavior in a, in a new future event by correlating it with a similar past event. For example, many working professionals dislike Mondays and complain that every Monday is the same, but every Monday is actually different. And our anticipation of Mondays is based on the similarities and the differences between Mondays that we have encountered in the past. So it's quite possible that a lot of us have encountered some unpleasant Mondays to be saying that. The next type of corollary is individuality corollary. People differ from one another in the construction of events. However similar two people are, their construction of similar events will still be slightly or could be completely different. If we look at a similar example to the one we've used before, if Two people see a roller coaster in action, one could look at it as a thrilling experience, while the other could look at it as a risky, unsafe experience which is definitely not worth their time or money. The next type is the organization corollary. Organizations have hierarchies. Kelly suggested that we develop our constructs in a systematic and organized way, with some constructs being ranked more highly than others. So our constructs are structured like an organization wherein some constructs subordinate others. The next type is dichotomy corollary. A dichotomy between two objects or concepts refers to them being opposites to one another. Kelly proposed that a person can have a finite number of dichotomous constructs. Just like we have a construct for being truthful, we will have a construct for lying. Dichotomous constructs are important to consider to be able to predict future events correctly. The next type of corollary is the choice corollary. When we are faced with dichotomous constructs in a situation, we choose the construct which suits the current situation best and expands upon our existing experiences. If there are multiple alternatives which are black or white, and some options which are grey, and if the choice isn't obvious, then most people would tend to choose the grey option. The next type of corollary is the range corollary. Kelly proposed that a single construct is applicable only for a finite range of events. The range could be small 
or large depending on the type of construct. For example, a construct based on size would be big versus small. Now we can use big in a variety of ways like big body, big money, big loser, big house, big wedding or many other ways. But do we ever say big weather or big death? No. So range basically elaborates that there is always a range of situations, a finite range of events where a corollary is applicable. The next type of corollary is the experience corollary. We learn from our experiences. As we gather experiences in life, we learn that certain constructs cannot efficiently predict our future and it might be useful for us to modify our constructs to actually get a better outcome. The next type is the modulation corollary. This corollary explains that different people have constructs with different permeability. Now permeability is the ease through which liquids or gases can pass through objects. For instance, a block of mud can be more permeable than a block of metal. The more permeable our constructs are, the easier it is to modulate or change them with new information. The next type of corollary is the fragmentation corollary. Kelly proposed that our construct system could have constructs which could be incompatible or inconsistent with one another and could still exist in the overall system. If an individual is failing to predict or control life, an incompatible construct could have been chosen. Choosing incompatible constructs could result in unpredictable behavior from people. The next type is the commonality corollary. Kelly suggested that if a group of people interpret experiences in a similar way, their cognitive and psychological processes tend to be similar. People from the same culture therefore tend to have similar characteristics despite different circumstances. The next type is the sociality corollary. During the course of our lives, we study not just our own behaviors, but those of others. Our ability to predict and control our life goes hand in hand with how we work with other people. In order to understand another person, we need to understand their constructs and try to anticipate how the person tends to predict events themselves. Understanding constructs therefore plays a role in understanding social psychology. Now let's move on to how personal construct theory could be used in a psychological assessment and psychotherapy. When it came to therapy, Kelly believed that a psychotherapist needs to understand the role a client expects him or her to assume in the therapy and the role the client expects themselves to play. The goal of therapy is a continuous reconstruction of the client's psychological systems during and after therapy. So other than regular therapy sessions, Kelly also developed a psychological assessment tool called the Role Construction Repertory Test or also called the REP test. The REP test is designed to outline the individual's repertory or basically the individual's arsenal of role constructs. The test starts with the client listing the important people in their lives in a list also called as a role title list. Now the names are then grouped three at a time and the client is asked to formulate some important way in which two of the three people are alike and different from the third person. As an example the three people grouped together can, could be the client's brother, sister and father. The client could state that their sister and brother easily trust people, whereas their father easily distrusts people. Now, in this case, trusting people versus distrust in people can be considered significant constructs used by the client to organize and interpret the world because that was the lens through which the person, the, the client, actually differentiated the three people. The common factor for this set is called the emergent pole 
and the differentiator is called the implicit pole. As the test continues, the therapist will build up and understand several sets of constructs used by the client and guide the therapy further. Now, one of the interesting routes to continue on therapy is a technique called fixed role therapy. Now, what is fixed role therapy? Here, the client is asked to prepare a character sketch about themselves as if they were important characters in a play and as if a close friend of the client is writing the play with them as the lead figures. The client is generally also asked to write a script on how they want to live their lives. Now, based on all of the information acquired from the rep test, the script produced by the client and the interviews conducted, the therapist produces a fixed role sketch for the client and asks the client to act it out over the period of weeks. So what happens is over time, the client is going to gradually learn a new construct system, which is more predictive than the old one. So this will actually provide the stability required in the client's life. So this is how the psychological assessment part of personal construct theory works. Now, let's move on to the discussion point in this tutorial. Now that we have a better understanding of constructs, let's make use of this knowledge in the comments section. Please enlist three important people in your life and just like the rep test, elaborate how two of them are similar to each other and different to the third. Now, you don't need to actually name the exact people if you don't want to for this exercise. You could just call them person A, B, C, etc. Now, mapping this out will provide you some insights on constructs that you use to organize and interpret the world around you. So I'm really looking forward to reading your comments here. Okay, I hope this information, this tutorial was useful for you, beneficial for you. You learned something new here. And I thank you very much for your attendance as always. And as always, please like the tutorials in this channel. Please share the tutorials in this channel. Subscribe, spread the word. And most importantly, please take very good care of your own self. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.